when you're thinking mountains, you're thinking Poconos, which you go up, yeah, the, yeah, you okay. go up the Northeast extension. Yeah. You mm-hmm. go up. Hi. Oh. <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> clip it clip it 100 percent. all right man let's get this started ho 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 here we go cheers cheers there it is i'm back <laughs> yes <laughs> what's up everybody my name is Anthony Irvin. You beat yourself? Yeah. Yeah, see me myself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm Jim Green. Don't even leave a hit of whoopee traffic light. <laughs> okay, good. Welcome to One Set. Have you ever wanted to start your podcast but didn't know where to start? The One Set Bros are here to talk to you about Zencaster. Zencaster is the ultimate base podcasting solution and now the all-in-one podcasting platform making podcasting easy. They've sure made it easy for us to be able to record our podcast and our episodes every week for you guys. Once you've set up your account, you're simply one click away from recording a high-quality podcast with studio-quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. My personal favorite feature is their multi-layer backups, which ensure our recordings are always in the highest quality, even during unstable web connections. And if you thought you needed multiple tools and services for your podcast, Zencaster's only one podcasting platform allows you to create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code one set pod and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience as we do with all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Dude, I've been getting this annoying itching feeling under my armpits from the deodorants I've been trying and using, and I can't seem to find something that works for me. Have you ever tried maybe like a natural deodorant? Natural deodorant? Uh, no. Are you insane? No, but I am wild. Oh, uh-huh. wild is the UK's number one natural deodorant company that focuses on performance, sustainability and style. Their mission is to clean up the bathrooms by leaving it free of ugly, single-use plastic bottles and unnecessary chemicals. You know why Wild is great? Because it actually works and it's eco-friendly and contains over 98.5% natural ingredients. They have a fully sustainable design with aluminum cases that last for a lifetime, plus biodegradable, recyclable refills. And you know what's cool? They can actually imprint your name on these aluminum cases for a small additional fee. Wild is super convenient with flexible subscription options or paying as one-off purchases. And you can customize your order by choosing your case, color, and various scent combinations. I know I have the Ocean Mist, the Fresh Cotton and Sea Salt, and the Orange and Neroli flavors, and they all smell super great. And what's best about them is they don't just wear off immediately, and then all of a sudden, you smell like B.O. Yeah, I've been rocking the Sandalwood and Pacholi scent right now. And again, great scent. Last like throughout the day that you know you're pretty much protected throughout the day and i also was able to try the mint and aloe vera big aloe vera fan right on point long lasting and you can look forward to uh these cases and scents in a limited edition every month go wild today with a special discount of 25 percent off your first order when you get the code one set pod at checkout Go to wearewild.com and use the code onesetpod at checkout and enjoy. It's good to be back. Yeah. I've I really missed it. Uh, it. It's been a long two weeks, but uh, I didn't catch that fish. But I lost a lot in return. <laughs> <laughs> you lost a lot in return of not catching. Of the not fish. catching the fish. Yeah, no, I, you were trying to catch a fish. In a different way. In a different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just to give people a little bit update, if people uh, care, uh, 
This is a great intro to the great, holiday episode. Great, <laughs> great vibes into dealing with the holiday episode. Perfect. Yeah, let's 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 get through the let's get the do uh, the do do. Let's get through the depressing stuff. First. Yeah, yeah. I think sure. even last year we we had like a really big slope of a depressing type of thing. Then we went back up. So we'll get that done for you right now, guys. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we, we got that taken care of for today. Here we go. Here but, we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but no, uh, again, if anybody cares to know, I mean, obviously, I wasn't uh present uh christmas present uh uh-huh. uh here the last two weeks but jim has been holding uh down the fort like a boss i uh, like a bow like <laughs> i unfortunately along with my other employees at my job we got furloughed two weeks ago uh again couldn't have been at the worst of times you know with my wife being pregnant a couple weeks out you know we're expecting uh little guy in a couple weeks so you know it was a very very bad situation uh but to cut you know to the chase i mean we're we're fine now we finally got some financial things going so we're in a better place two weeks later from it than what we were you know 24 hours after being told so uh it just goes to show that anything and i'd like to try to take this the time to get out of the depressing to make it into a positive that you know i uh, anything can happen in life but it's the way that you tackle it right then and there i feel you know once you know i had my emotions about it i had my things like what am i gonna do because i was so you know depressed to talk to you know jen about it you know because i knew she was gonna freak out rightfully so but you know right after that day i got things started getting things i needed to get done so you know I, i told jim that day and he's like dude don't worry it's like you don't even have to worry about the podcast just get do what you got to do so again thank you for you know being you know number one dude to get this uh podcast rolling so he's been you know holding it down solo he's been riding solo that's the one yeah yeah so uh glad to be back uh you know it's especially like how we were just saying in our hundredth episode uh you know going a hundred weeks and doing this every week for a hundred weeks and then taking two weeks off from it, even though we've taken weeks off, but like knowing that I, that I wasn't like behind like a microphone or just doing some type of thing in this type of way. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I cannot wait to be back. I was expecting to probably be back last week, but you had already told me like, Hey, I got this, I got this episode for next week. So I'm like, are you on the ball? I love it. Thank you. So, uh, Yeah. Uh, you know, and it just happened to be the fact that we came in today and we're like, hey, we weren't expecting to do this Christmas episode this year just because, you know, um, we're expecting uh, our second child, but it just so happened I ain't got Whoopsie. to do. So-, <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, hey, let's just get this done. And this is our second, uh, you know, anniversary of the behind the platform episode. That's right. Or no, more like in front of the platform episode. Correction. In front of the platform. It, it doesn't have the same ring. No. But that, that that's okay. It it can have a jingle. Yeah. Instead. Yeah. It's all it about the, it's all about the jingles. Yeah. Get them. Get them jingles. Uh, Speaking of jingles, let's get into it. So uh, I'll say one thing. We're, we're going to talk a lot of Christmas stuff, but one thing that uh lingers to me and i'm not sure if we talked about this last time the one thing that lingers to me is the pa lotteries commercial when are they going to update that thing with a different jingle <laughs> whoopsie yeah happy birthday happy um, birthday <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, totally agree and the other one and i don't think they'll update it as long as long as hershey kisses are a thing the Hershey kiss. We wish you a Merry Christmas jingle yeah. with the tree. Uh huh. And seeing that, Santa Claus, that that whole thing too. I think is that the one you're talking about too. Oh, no, that's M and M's. That's like that's not Hershey. That's M and M's. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that, yeah, I, again, the one he does exist. They do exist. They do exist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. I mean, they. I think that M M&M one came out maybe 10, 15 years ago. That Hershey kiss one has been around for like 20 that yeah years okay now i know the one the little ding do 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 yeah the, it's mm-hmm. in the shape of the christmas tree and then and a happy new year <laughs> <laughs> but hey it's the same thing in fact of like don't fix what's not broken right well and they're 
they're going to get royalties off of that commercial for years. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it's it's a very smart thing. I mean, let, let's cut. I mean, with the PA lottery, they still have the same commercial, but they just change the actual promotion of what lottery like thing you're getting so that's the only thing they change every year but it's still the same jingle the same people and i i wonder how old they are now like (laughs) old enough that they never have to see probably yeah like (laughs) because they're fine yeah they're fine (laughs) yeah or they're not just keep the checks coming (laughs) i'll be fine (laughs) or it's paying for their families because they're not here anymore right (laughs) yeah they're in their they're in their their time at home just like remember when i did that commercial yeah i didn't like it at the time either but they're just okay they're still giving me checks so i gotta be happy i feel happy (laughs) i feel fine (laughs) i feel happy monty python shout out Um, yeah right um yeah i mean the, the like that hershey commercial Every year that I see it, I'm like, okay, again, still. Right after Thanksgiving, they mm-hmm. like, I think it's the only holiday where after the holiday before, they just like get on the Christmas stuff. Yeah. Well, and even before Thanksgiving, though, they start doing holiday stuff, but it's like right after they're just like at midnight, t- tune into everything Christmas right then and there. <laughs> right. Well, and it's, I was getting my, um, ears lowered aka my hair is cut mm. um before my nutcracker performance a couple weeks ago and um the lady that did my hair is actually the owner of this like the salon mm-hmm. uh and i was like so when did you decorate in here for because i i got my hair cut last before um i went to nashville back in september um it was like before the new season for the dance studio started i was like okay i want to clean up and stuff she's like yeah, I actually did it like a few weeks ago. Now, granted, I, it was like December 1st. I was getting my hair cut. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, geez, before Thanksgiving. And, and and she's like, yeah, well, like I like I decorate the place so that my like regulars that come in see the holiday thing, like yeah. holiday decorations in, in, in the uh, salon and know like, hey, you need to book your appointments for your holiday colors, like coloring and like, right. cuts and, and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And, you know, we, we, not we, but like everyone that you run into is like, they just keep putting out the Christmas stuff earlier and earlier and earlier it's every true. year. And I think, I think, I think the one year that I really noticed it was when it started, not, not even in October, like, oh, it's not even Halloween yet. And there's Christmas stuff. Like I saw that Whoopsie. in September and was like, this is calm down like this is it is okay. <laughs> like i'm not even thinking about christmas at that point i'm just thinking about the fact that the cold weather is like upon us in september like you're getting your last little bit of like beach time in mm-hmm. september and then literally like two three weeks later you're just like okay it's 40 degrees out and uh, again we are in the mid-atlantic region in the united states mm-hmm. for those watching overseas or listening overseas uh in other spots of the world yeah shout out bots shout out to our international fans uh love y'all um but yeah it it goes through like hot and cold seasons here and i i can't i don't know if we talked about this last we don't remember all of the things we talked about last year so for those there's some repeats yeah it's all good it's hey this tree was here last year it's here again (laughs) Yeah, so you're gonna get some repeat stuff, uh, <laughs> and and uh, let us know if you watched last year's episode and this episode back to back. Because I'm gonna say, if we don't hear from you, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> comment below if you do, and then comment on the on the on the last Christmas one, so then we can kind of go back and forth. Like, yeah, you watch both. Yeah, you watch both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out! Here comes a shirt. A comment wife. one year later, like, yeah, I watched it this year and last year. Like, okay, you're, yeah, we'll believe you. It's literally <laughs> not a carbon copy. Um, I mean, we had the ugly sweaters last year, right? We did. And yeah, and the Santa hats. Mm-hmm. And I told you before, like I was supposed to get here earlier today. Shocker. I got here later than expected. Um, <laughs> couldn't find my Santa hat. Uh, and I saw it a week ago and I'm like, where do I put this thing? And I, I, I felt the same way. I, I, I thought we were, we were downstairs in the basement getting some stuff out for the decorations and stuff. You can see we really didn't do too much other than the 
uh, platform this year just because we're like, hey, after Christmas, all this stuff's going down anyway because we got to definitely be in like baby mode at that point. But um, I thought I saw, you know, a Santa hat down there. And I'm like, all right, thinking to myself, okay, keep that like at least where I know where it is out of my mind don't know where it is <laughs> it, it got sucked into the infinite abyss of your yeah. things right <laughs> yeah. yeah the infinite abyss is what we call a basement down there and my small little studio spot but yeah that that is what it is but you know still try to be a little festive we got our red and green on so we're doing it up for you guys at least for this year so doing we're good thing. doing the same thing uh yeah i thought i found my hat earlier and then I was like, ooh, and I ripped it out. It's a stocking. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you. Whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, evil Christmas like? Krampus. Uh, cr- yeah, I'm like, it's fucking Krampus. Like- <laughs> 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 uh-huh. he, yeah, he plotted that there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Krampus, I have. I don't I don't think the movie's called Krampus. It's called something else. Something. I, I, but I know what you mean. I, I'll look it up real quick. Yeah. I, I did see it um, maybe. F- I've never seen it. Three, four, five years ago. Um, and it's it's scary. Yeah. Like they they someone wanted to do like a scary Christmas movie and they did it. Like it's 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 pretty. Right. Tough. I mean, I'm not like a horror film buff like some people are. When you're talking about hydration, hydration is not only for people training for championships and marathons. We're talking about daily maintenance people. Jim, did you know that 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated? I believe it, Anth. I mean, honestly, in my line of work, uh, dealing with teaching uh, children and also dancing with uh, adults my age, younger and older, I, I I can almost tell. Based off of how well people not just perform athletically, but how we carry ourselves and how we communicate back and forth, our facial gestures and our and just our energy alone. I can tell when somebody's sluggish and they're sleep deprived versus they're just sluggish because they're a dried up sponge because they are dehydrated, right? Absolutely. And for people like me who are working the nine to five and, you know, for me gigging at night, proper hydration is definitely crucial to maintain function throughout the day and keeping yourself energized. And that's why proper functional hydration is essential. And who's going to give it to you? Liquid IV, because Liquid IV is the number one powered hydration brand in America. Their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. Uh, I like to use it first thing in the morning. Uh, I've been doing a lot of workouts here and there. So I pop it in my uh, water bottle first thing in the morning. Gives me a little boost of energy of what I need. And, you know, sometimes during the day when I'm doing that like two o'clock, you know, rundown, I'll pop a little one, if not in the morning. Uh, you know, it gives me a little bit of that energy that I need. With just one stick, you can hydrate real life two times faster than water alone, plus get essential vitamins and three times the electrolytes as the leading sports drink. And not only that, Liquid IV comes in 12 delicious, refreshing flavors to keep your hydration routine exciting. Yeah, Anth, I mean, for me personally, like my day to day, I'll wake up and pop a Liquid IV just to get my day started and start off with proper hydration. And then I. And like required to be physically active between the hours of like two or three p.m. until nine, ten, eleven, sometimes midnight if I'm doing a backup gig. So I'll do another one maybe around noon, one p.m., and that'll keep me going throughout the day. And I just feel so much better. I don't even drink coffee on the regular like that because I don't need to pick me up unless if I'm like really just not sleeping much. And then I'm like, all right. Get me that. I don't like to rely on caffeine unless I absolutely feel like I need it. Liquid IV does the trick for me. I don't know about you. Again, one stick with liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficient than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drinks. And it's made with quality ingredients, non-GMO and free of gluten, dairy and soy. Liquid IV believes that equitable access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world. They partner with leading organizations to fund and foster innovative solutions that help communities protect both their water 
and their futures. To date, Liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Yeah, man. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code one set pod. That's one set pod and at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code one set pod at liquidiv.com. I was just going to say, somebody's going to comment on it. It's like, it really wasn't that bad. Like, we're not horror. We're not horror people. So call us. Whoopsie. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So it, it was called Krampus and it's uh, coined as a horror movie. And right. It, it came out in 2015. So, okay. So that's pretty recent. Ago. Yeah. It's, it's, pretty still it's pretty assuming, recent assuming it was released around christmas time because why wouldn't they? why wouldn't it yeah um miss me maybe later <laughs> i already donated collapse <laughs> okay but I, I, I can't even really think of, other than that like off the top of my head like what, what are some other you know christmas horror like films not that i've really seen any but so, I, I, other than that that's the first one that kind of came to mind so yeah that 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 movie actually came out um like okay november 30th was like the la release and then december 4th 2015 was like the actual release um it is 97 minutes so it's not like a two hour plus movie but it's not like a short december 4th was a horror day for me too so it's all good (laughs) okay okay (laughs) dude it's crazy you were talking um and if you keep dropping those references uh thanks for the reminder it so we're recording right now. Um, it is Monday, December 18th, one forty-five. I was sitting there waiting for my interview mm-hmm. for like the day job, which if you tuned into the last couple episodes, I got yeah. like, a day job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I talk about the why yeah. in, in the in the most recent episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was literally two weeks ago, like right now. Uh, like I, they brought me, they had me come in for an interview for one thirty. And um, I got there 10 minutes early and they were like, yeah, even though we asked you to come in for an interview, fill out this application. And I was like, "Okay, (sighs) it's it's literally (laughs) just formality. It's like they needed extra help. And they were like, yeah, just make them fill out the the paperwork. Right. (laughs) It's usually I mean, if you're trying to look for a temporary thing, now's the good time to kind of we cheers and didn't drink. That's why I didn't do it. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Mother. Like, I should have been like, mm, like. <laughs> well, don't, don't, well, do we cheers again? And now I guess we cheers again like, now right, and erase now. that. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Reset. Eh. And, and, now right. we, and now we both have to double. I don't need any more bad luck on the, on the holiday season. So it's good. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. It was literally two weeks ago right now that like Anthony was calling me, um, for a second i was like did i talk about i totally didn't talk about this on here right um, but mm-hmm. you called me and I, and he doesn't just call so i'm like something's weird and i answered not going into like detail or anything um i was like yo man you all right and you're like i wish i could say i was and then you like explained to me and i was like i i like i i, I got mm-hmm. you it's fine because uh, I rarely, I rarely like call you during the day. It's usually just like text messaging so like you said like i knew something had to be up because when you call usually it's usually not something great but yeah not was, that it's always something bad but it's usually something time. you definitely can't really text about yeah i was uh pretty nervous at, and if you didn't watch the past couple episodes with me um solo i was like what am i gonna do i'm so used to having someone to mm-hmm. bounce conversation off to so i'm like yeah. I'm literally recording and just talking to my laptop and i'm like hope you all hear this let me know <laughs> <laughs> right? wait until you get to the point where you you're just doing it by yourself and then you really forget that you press record and you've gotten into a rhythm and you're like whoopsie like <laughs> and then you didn't press record and, and, and yeah and you're chatting for 20 30 minutes and then you're like oh oh click then you got to remember everything you probably talked about because you're like oh this is good stuff but nobody's ever going to hear it except myself yeah. me myself and i yeah. shout out jim carrey whoopsie, <laughs> yeah whoopsie. <laughs> Um, but again, like I thought about like Bill Burr and how he's been recording solo for like 15, almost 20 years now. Like it definitely is like, are like, if you are good with talking to yourself and like knowing you're talking to an audience, that's not really there. And you're just a good natural talker, which I am usually not, but I've told people have told me that I, I have like a natural thing like this. 
I, I'll take it as a compliment, but it's hard for me too to kind of just press a record button and just start talking. Uh, I mean, I can speak to when you said you were like going solo with like performing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he's going to just like chat the audience in between playing and stuff. And yeah. Like it was like you found your way along the way. It wasn't like mm-hmm. you walked into it and you were like dead perfect immediately. Right. Um, but now it's like, just like a piece of cake to me. The yeah, kind of just I mean, like it's it's like another uh it, it's kind of been just embedded into myself now that I, I've had like what six, seven, yeah, almost seven years of experience on talking like with uh you know a microphone and being in, in a solo setting. So dude, you went you went solo at least ten years ago. Well, I'm saying, yeah, I guess, but like covers when I started doing cover music, you but start, yeah, when I started you doing started, when you started releasing, you, you literally went into going solo and just doing original music first. Like yeah. You so you're not using, uh, you do a little more talking with the original music because I was so used to like when I was doing the original stuff by myself, it's like you play a song, you say, thank you. You explain the next song, you play the song, you say thank you, you get to the next song, you explain that a little bit, you play it. So it's like a, a, a step type of thing. But then once I started playing the cover music, it was like once I would say, you know, I would kind of start doing a little bit of that. But I'm like, oh, these people don't give a Whoopsie. about what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like right. play music, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to the point where I'm just like, all right. I swear, Next I, ho- song. I hope no one ever said that to you, by the way. <laughs> I hope nobody ever actually said that, they by the way. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't know. You said that, and I was like, no way no one like, ever actually said that. They probably would have been thrown out of the bar, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It depends on where. But um, anyway. Yeah, so I, I think... It, with, like, with it just your- got to the point where you have to know that you just roll into the next song and then every once in a while you'll just be like, Hey, anybody, when you notice a couple more people rolling into the bar, you can kind of just reintroduce yourself. That's the kind of thing that I think about maybe every 30, 45 minutes, or at least I try to do it twice during the set. Cause you know, if you're playing earlier in the night and you mm-hmm. uh, keep on going, there's going to be new people coming in and out. So you, I mean, you'll want to be like, Hey, uh anthony irvin thanks for being here blah blah blah. let me know if there's any uh you know songs you want to know if i know it i'll definitely play it for you bartenders shout out blah 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 so it's like a little spiel that i have now and then (laughs) just get then go right into the next song so (laughs) so i mean like just considering watching wrestling sports like the commentators all do that Mm -hmm. like and and you don't pick up on it because you're just like you hear them say, if you're just tuning in now, it's like, I, you know, I've, I've been watching since the start or I, I've been watching for an hour. So you kind of just dismiss it and mm-hmm. you don't think about it. But uh, there are times where I've turned on a game late because I either worked and didn't get to catch the beginning. Yeah. It's like, oh, if you're just tuning in now, like so and so just got injured earlier. Right. Or like in wrestling, they'll do like a recap of something that happened earlier in the night. Right. It's like, that's in case uh oh yeah by the way your audience might not be watching the full-blown three hour exactly jr jr was good at that yeah Yeah. like if you were tuning in at like the top of the hour of it like how you doing ladies and gentlemen here we go (laughs) (laughs) yeah and uh, you're in for a slobber knocker here earlier in the night blah 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 blah. let's go (laughs) shout out to jr man i i i still think uh and then king out of nowhere puppies Yeah, I mean, gotta love uh, the king too. Yeah, and like they were such a great duo on commentary, and everyone, um, yeah, everyone raised. They were the commentary of our childhood. Yeah, well, because we and we've talked about how we we, we got into wrestling in like '98. Um, mm-hmm. so it was like the, it was like early, early Attitude Era, right? I mean, yeah. And it wasn't, I think people say like 96 into seven was like the end of, um, I forget. I don't know if the golden era was coined like through yeah, I don't the know. late eighties, early nineties, like Hogan's reign and all that. Yeah. Stuff. I don't know when that kind of really, we'd have to check up on our history, people like wrestling and history, history and our people and, that and we dates. know. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I think being fans for. 
25 years now that's like stuff as we're getting older it's like yeah we should probably know some of like the mm-hmm. history history stuff which like, right i've gone back and watched some of the older matches that people rave are like classics and i watch them and be like yeah it's all right, right. like you know I, mm-hmm. I watched um the intercontinental title match with uh sean michaels and razor ramon i have too yeah and and like i'm watching it and i'm like yeah, it's good. It's fun. But like, I think that why it was so good was because it was the best of its at time. the time. And mm-hmm. we, I mean, we, we got like the table ladder chair matches that were just like iconic. Literally. Yeah. Iconics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you said, the, the table ladder chairs with Christian Edge and Hardy's and Dudley's. the Dudley's. Come on now. That, I mean, that that match is like set in stone. And I think people rave about the the second one that they did. Yeah, I think it was and the second one. I uh, I don't remember. Think it was 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 that um was that in Philly? Or maybe it was the year I don't, before? I think it, it was around the Philly WrestleMania uh, back the, in the nineties. The Philly, yeah, because and it's it's crazy to me to think that wrestlemania 40 is coming to philly yeah and we haven't had like one we have we haven't had a wrestlemania in philly since wrestlemania 15 which was 99 so 24 uh well i get do math uh, uh, (laughs) do math (laughs) math. um i mean year wise it would have been 99 i guess i guess if it was wrestlemania 15 and 99 wrestlemania 40 25 years later in 2024 okay yeah yeah, yeah that, that, 25 that, that, that makes sense that 25. makes sense mm-hmm. that makes sense um you're good we're accurate <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because i watch like the math like problem reels on like instagram and facebook and i'm like all right let me see if this is something that's gonna like actually challenge me or and there's some things that are really basic and then i watch and i'm like I couldn't figure that out. Yeah. And then there are some things that look really hard and I'm like, I got it. Like, right. It's just, just, just like we're, we're always thinking, you know, the longer, harder way to do things, but then all you needed was just uh, add these two things up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's also like the way that math is taught now compared to when we learned it mm-hmm. uh, 20 years ago. Right. Right. I they've, say they've totally done a, 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 a different like long division technique at this point. Right? I, I heard I've, I've seen, se- it. seen it and heard. I'm like, wow, I'm glad we did it the way we did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually I tell like my students about how um, like when I first like felt really confident and good about math, I was like the first kid in fourth grade to know how to do long division. And, and, and like to the point where the teacher was like, go up to the chalkboard and explain it so that the like the class could see yeah. if he can figure it out, the rest of you can figure it so out. So the popular kids can cheat off your stuff. Yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> Cause what we're I doing was it not for, that. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were the ones that the popular kids like, all right, go do that. So I can copy off of you and say, good job. Thanks buddy. Yeah. And if pat we, on the back and, and if we didn't allow it, we were still uncool. Yeah. And if so. we allowed it still, still uncool. uncool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Got a little sidetracked there. So math back in uh, um, wrestling Christmas music. Yeah. Just to just, just to get us back on track. Back here. a little bit on track. Um, no Christmas. We You asked me other scary movies and I had something mm-hmm. in mind and then I went. So the only other movie. Um, I couldn't think of another scary movie. Like so Christmas movie. It's, from- it's not like per se like classified as a horror movie. But like the Nightmare Before Christmas, right? Okay. So, yeah. but that to me is more of a Halloween based movie, or it's yeah, like you can watch it after Halloween. Mm-hmm. So Cheyenne's never seen it, so we're gonna watch it this weekend. Um, right, but, highly recommend. Like, I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah, I, I it's I watched it once for the first time like five years ago. And it's a long movie, so like we like we we've talked about how like watching movies like you have to like cut out a span of time to watch mm-hmm. it. It's not like a show where you're like, I can watch 50 minutes and now yeah. either keep going for three or four more episodes or just say, okay, I'll catch the next one mm-hmm. later after the fact. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that for this year for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and didn't watch that last year. So that's something again, like that I'm looking forward to doing this year that I have like, didn't do last year. You have anything going on this year that you didn't do last year. Other, otherwise, or 
other than the fact that you said like you didn't decorate as much because like right as soon as Christmas is done, you've got to like make sure that the place yeah, it's, is good it's to just go. you know we weren't even going to do this this year, but we were like, hey, this is going to be little Anthony's like last year as like a single, you know kid so you know he's getting married he's, next he's year. getting married next year <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he's gonna have a brother next year so he's gonna be sharing everything so we wanted to at least do a couple things like you know decorate outside do this but it's not i mean it's still got its purpose but we didn't go full out everything this year with it but we at least did the thing to say that we did it for him and and especially this year he's been all over just like he, he'll go to the alexa now and be like alexa turn on the platform <laughs> <laughs> wait really alexa can turn on the platform yeah like if if i told alexa which she's probably if i'm saying she, she's gonna react to alexa and i told her to turn it off she would turn it off right now so like that lamp this the lights out there i love lamp uh, I love lamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's great because then because I don't have to worry about getting back there and like shimmying back there to turn that off. So all you do is just tell Alexa to, you know, turn it off and then you're good. So uh, what is your Alexa like in the kitchen or it's right? On, yeah, right uh, above the sink. OK, so so it can reach into like the back room. Yeah, it obviously isn't. It, it won't reach upstairs because we've yeah. tried it so if we're walking up the stairs and you tell it'll catch it it'll catch it at the last like if you if you're up there it won't but uh if you're like right at this little section and you're saying to turn something off it'll usually turn off and before you like graze through where like the ceiling comes in yeah because kind of once you get like up there the, the, it's like a dead sound yeah, so the, the, the sound will just travel up sound wave won't travel yeah, sure but yeah that's, that's about our alexa but it, it it's great because then you don't have to worry like especially if you forgot to turn the lights off and you're already upstairs you can just go on your phone and like turn it off if anything too that's pretty cool yeah but I, yeah i mean anything that we weren't really playing like again we weren't planning to do this but we just got it and i'm glad we did it because I'm, then I'm you know happy that you guys did it too especially because this is um like paying tribute to mm -hmm. right like, so that's... keeping it going and you know at least it doesn't feel different for little Anth, like because you know he's already gonna have so many different like things going when uh little guy's born yeah. so we wanted to try to keep at least some type of things similar and keep going and you know so we're well, glad at the end of the day we did what we did well, but even him being three years old like he's like talking very engaged pretty with everything he's engaged with everything so this was like a good year for him to like yeah. really get that last one in there absolutely uh you know but you were talking about movies and stuff like you're waiting to you know see nightmare uh before christmas me with christmas like my favorite movie around halloween is obviously halloween the halloween franchises mm -hmm. franchises jesus uh, jesus jesus, jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but around christmas one of my favorite movies to watch outside of i would say this is a it's getting to be a close one-on-one -on -one with it uh the 24-hour christmas story special yeah that's always one that i always because i grew up on that show movie show uh but now it's been like i gotta watch jim carrey's the grinch yeah every year so that's like something that i gotta like at least have one night to watch that whole movie front to back and I, even if i get it one time i'm like all right good at least i saw it so now and, that I have a lot of time, I'll be watching it a lot more. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I I asked because I started teaching um, this uh, last week to my hip hop classes. Um, so there's a Jim Carrey Busta Rhyme, Mr. Grinch mm. song. And it's like, you know, Busta Rhymes. Is in it, so it's like a hip hop Christmas gotcha. song. There's not a lot of them. Um, Rum DMC does Christmas and Hollis, which is like is awesome. I remember being uh, a kid and watching. Uh, I don't know. I forget what it might have been a Twix commercial, but um, there was like a break dancing, hmm. like Santa doing like windmills and head spins, and it was with Run DMC's uh, Christmas and Hollis, and I was like, hmm. okay, this song is cool, and I want to be able to do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's cool. I want to do that too, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah. is that your favorite? Like, is that, is that a Christmas song or just yeah. the? Uh, is that like your favorite Christmas song to, per se? Or so, um, let, let me wrap up the Grinch story mm -hmm. and I'll jump into that one. Yeah. Um, so I asked, um, like my hip hop classes, I was like, 
who in here has seen all three of the Grinch movies? Right. Because the new one came out in 2017. I think and little guy saw that and he actually likes that. So and that's that's Benedict uh, Cumberbatch that the, 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 uh, voiced over for the Grinch in that one. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So haven't seen the new one. And um, I don't remember if I saw the Jim Carrey one like the first year it came out. Yeah, um, it took me a little bit to it was a couple years. get into it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see it when it came out, and but I knew I knew of it. I think they did a superb job, um, adapting it from the OG, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. also expanding the story of it and mm-hmm. and all of the live action uh, decorating that they did to make Whoville look like yeah, it's, it's just so good. There's it's this so thing uh, I think it was from the BBC. Uh, interviews and Jim Carrey was talking about him being in the costume and there was this thing he was talking about uh saying like you know being in the costume was just like hell for him but he was trying to say like uh, or trying to talk to somebody about like you know what's some things that kind of get your mind off of like you know I guess being in the like a claustrophobic type of state with all that like I think he said it was like yak hair that was all over him and then the, the makeup he was in for like eight hours a day and they said like you can either you know smoke to kind of get your mind off of that or like uh every once in a while like kind of like by uh, either like punching or kicking your leg or something to kind of just get your mind off of it so he's like so i i'm in the dressing room and i'm smoking a cigarette and i'm going ha, 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 like kicking myself so you can see me in the in the dress room, i'm just smoking a cigarette and like ha, ha. <laughs> Just to kind of keep his mind off of the whole like Taryn that he's keeps saying he's like, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> yeah. And um the I, I guess the best part about that is he got to be grumpy, like playing the role. If so he anybody could take out his aggravation on like wearing the lacot. Like, yeah, like, I mean, if anybody to play that role, Jim Carrey was the perfect person. Because like the facial features of the Grinch, the whole smile thing and you know, just his whole demeanor does because I mean, he has that goofy type of way to him. So anybody else, I don't think would have been able to play that role the same as what he did. Oh, not not even a little bit. I mean, um, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to think like Robin Williams, he, like he could he could have done it. He, I, th- he, he, I would probably think that's the only other one that only other dude that could probably do it. Yeah, he, he could have done it. Um. Like I, I want to try to, like envision him doing it, mm-hmm. and um, I don't want to say he wouldn't have gotten the job done, but I think Jim Carrey was the right number yeah. one person for it. It, it would have been two different versions of the Grinch between them both, because I think they had both have a, I think they would both have had a different vision for it, mm-hmm. but I think they would have been able to tackle it. But the way that we see it with Jim is the way you would envision the Grinch being like, you know, super, you know, angry at everything. And, you know, then he just comes into realizing what Christmas really means and everything. And mm-hmm. so it, it was just an awesome movie. So I, that's one thing that I got to watch every year now. Did you, did you ever see cat in a hat with Michael Myers? Not front to back. Yeah. I, I haven't seen any of it, but like when I was asking the kids and some of them were like, yeah, the live action Grinch is pretty scary. And I'm like, yeah, you're not. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see why it could be because yeah. that's why I'm like, I'm hesitant to, to show it to a little guy. Cause I'm like, well, he is a little scary, so I can understand, yeah. but it's funny to me. But <laughs> yeah, well, but, and you have the appreciation for Jim Carrey. Like, right. So it, it helps. It, but that, he, we let him or not let him, but we showed him the cartoon version of the Grinch. The, the one where you're just uh, no, not the original Grinch, the one that came out uh, like five couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, so he liked that one. Did, what did you think of it? I thought it was good because I, I didn't know what I was going to think of it because I heard it was similar, but they also did new things, which they is, did a couple new things. Yeah. yeah. So from the original to Jim's to this one that just came out, they they all have the same synopsis, but they take it in their own ways. So it's it's good. It's good. I, I liked it. They, they stick to the whole meaning of him taking away presents and doing that. But they they have their own, you know, synopsis of him leading up to that moment and doing everything so it's good so the original grinch was like a television special Uh uh-huh so it was like what 30 45 minutes something like that uh if that i I think it was like 45 maybe an hour it wasn't if if that it wasn't long 
what year do you think that came out in? Because I had to look it up, and I know it was older. Yeah, but I, was I would like, have to say maybe, and I'm horrible with, with years and stuff, but I'd probably have to say like maybe 50s or 60s. It was 1966. So okay. I was going to say 66 for some odd reason, yeah. but I'm like, that's too, that's no, nah, I'll you go a little like bit. That was a little late. A little late. Yeah, it was yeah. a little too late. So I'm like, maybe like 50s, but I'm like, all right, I'll go 50s, 60s. So 66 seems right. Yeah. Um, and with all the, the, you know, the way of how it looks, it looks more obviously predated to like 50s, 60s era type stuff. And for all you know, they started making that like three or four years before uh-huh, it actually uh-huh. got released because animation back then, that back in the day was literally drawing, hand frame, drawing, frame by frame, right? And, I, and I've seen that like once or twice, and I'm like, that is an art in itself. Just drawing frame by frame, and then picture, draw it out, picture, draw it. Out. That is tedious. Yeah. Well, when you when you think about the flip books that we I was saw just back in that the too. 90s, and you'd see a flip book that was maybe you know 13 10, pages, something 10 like that. Pages, 20, yeah. But you see one that's like 50 pages, and you're like, whoa, look at how cool it actually tells what was, a story. What was one of the flip book? drawings like what would you draw have you what would you usually draw because i could tell you like something that i would do do you remember like what you would like what you would draw to make in that flip book i couldn't draw really like that you were a pretty good drawer though i usually did like like a stick figure dunking a basketball or a stick figure you know doing like the head banging thing or something nice but i was it was more doing like the bass he would dribble the ball and then like dunk it into a basketball net which is so cool because uh you like love basketball and you love obviously like music yeah. like so that totally fits from you being a child mm-hmm. like that's so cool um yeah i once you said that was that was definitely something i was thinking about like that was like the coolest thing back then was just taking the edgier uh notebook when you weren't paying attention in school which we were pretty you know we were always paying attention, but it was like the 5% of the time where we're like, Oh, this sounds like my ADHD is coming in. So I'm just going to start doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just flip through it for a couple of minutes. You're like, okay, well I got to pay attention again. Yeah. Up oh, the bell rung. Oh, we got to go. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then you get into your next class and you sit down and be like, all right, before the teacher teaches, let me finish up these couple <laughs> pages here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see, in the, in the class and he's already sleeping. And you're like, oh, whoopsie people. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you mean you mean the whole room snuck out and like, <laughs> those were those are some of the we'll cut his times. name out but still it, yeah. oh my god i i wanted to like pee myself when he was still in there and we just let him sleep the, and the bell rung and we just let him sleep and he just wakes up he's like oh you whoopsie. no i i, I think <laughs> <laughs> there was only one other thing better than that and it's when you walked into a classroom and the teacher's going like this yeah, because someone from the last class uh-huh. has slept, and then everyone just sat down and was like, "Oh, this will get them." This'll oh get yeah, them. we were. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. I think the teacher was like, and he was he's just like on the on the desk like this. Yeah. So no clue anybody's even coming in, out like a light. I I, I gotta say, I think I think I I can't remember a specific incident where like I got the witness walking into the room and that being a thing but i know it happened once or twice for me mm-hmm. and it's the best because it'll be five ten minutes into the class and then they wake up and i think it's because like they start to come to like mm-hmm. they're not knocked out pass out of sleep yeah and then they hear other people's voices that aren't familiar yeah yeah because yeah. he just woke up out of it we we didn't have to be like hey or he, he just kind of succumbs out of his sleep so so, so wait for for him did you leave and leave him in the room or did you get into the room and he was still there? No, we got into the room and he was there like face down. <laughs> and I think it was either the teacher or a couple of students had got there already and said, like, don't say anything. We're trying to like yeah, get him to the just first sleep. Couple people that got there, the teacher would be like, tell everyone on the way in. Yeah. And then so we, and, we, and then it just get into the room and as people like, were walking nah. in, we're just like, yeah, shut up. Like, don't yeah. say anything. And then it literally got to the point where the bell rung and it was maybe three to five minutes, minutes into the in. class and he just starts waking up put puts his head up instantly is like where the f- am i oh you <laughs> <laughs> and he just gets out of the class <laughs> it was so funny God. uh high school days yeah that guy i got i think i talked about that um like this incident on one of the earlier podcasts where i mm-hmm. um 
we were both skater boys at one point. I think I was doing it a little more in high school than you were. Or I did more of the rollerblading at one or, point. Like I, I put down the skateboard and did like the uh, rollerblading because mm-hmm. I felt I was a lot better at that than. I oh, mean, after sent your skateboard out. Yeah, like, whoopsie, pretty much, get run over. It was pretty much an RIP after <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I learned not to let anybody use my skateboard after that. Yeah, you're like especially a- somebody who doesn't skateboard, yeah. who thinks they can skateboard. It's like, let me do an ollie, and then he flip. Oh my god, the car literally ran it over. I remember seeing that happen. Be like. An- another moment where it could be the worst situation that happens it happens like <laughs> <laughs> literally tries to do an ollie which we know he couldn't do and he just <laughs> and it just flipped right out under his feet and he rolls into the street no car is coming for about five ten minutes old lady comes bam and just snatched my board in half the one time an old lady drove fast right <laughs> right <laughs> um ran away from the scene of a crime <laughs> yeah and after that uh your mom was like you are not getting a new skateboard i will get you rollerblades and they will stay on your feet only <laughs> just and- like <laughs> just rolling down the street like this sucks <laughs> <laughs> whoopsie sucks <laughs> Oh god! But no, it was a lot better than getting, uh, <laughs> you know, the board uh, when trying to do a kick flip, and then it suddenly just decides to go, you know, vertical and just hit you right in the nuts every five seconds. So I'm like, yeah. I think I'm ready to stop. You know. <laughs> Speaking of, um, like getting back to like the detention that I got. Mm-hmm. Totally, watch that guy out front of my house go to like, um. I think he was trying to grind on the curb and the, and it um the board turned sideways and he <laughs> fell on it and totally credit carded himself. Yeah. I watched that happen and him lay there in pain and, and then he got up and he was like, Hey man, shake it off for, for the love of uh, skateboarding. Right? Yeah, right. I, um, that was it for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't yeah, have to I, think twice about that. So <laughs> I think I got a newer skateboard maybe junior or senior year, and then I like barely used i still have it i think i may have had maybe three or four boards in the span of time excuse me yeah good one yeah i think i maybe had like three or four boards in the span of the time that i was skateboarding and i think i maybe had two i had purchased two well one uh my grandma purchased but uh two skates i had like k2s and then i had these swindler skates so k2 was a pretty big brand back then and then swindler i think was it might not it might swindler or uh swindler something like that but yeah they were like one of the topper brands and everything so i uh, i quickly discovered i was way more better at the rollerblading the inline ro- rollerblading than you know going and dropping in on a skateboard jeez i could not drop down on a quarter pipe to save myself i ate Whoopsie. a lot yeah. before i could actually yeah. do it boards and blades man i, I stuck to that mini half pipe a lot because i'm like they when they had the i did the roll no i never did the roll in on a skateboard i did the rolling on roller blades okay like the one that was in the very back and it was like rolling then you had like the pyramid at the i back could there. do the rolling ones i could not drop in to save myself like, yeah i i it took me a while to kind of just really like you have to like slam it down to really yeah. get it in there i'd always be afraid about leaning too hard into it or so leaning too would, far forward and you're just like Pfft. yeah so i wouldn't lean hard enough and i'd like just be like eh, and then just and you get your back, my back your back wheels would start going on out from underneath you yeah yeah i i, I never mastered that um my brother was really good at skateboarding. He was he, pretty good. he he did really good for a little while, but again, he could we all fit. Yeah, he and he was doing uh the big half pipes at one point. Just him and a couple other. I'm like, yeah, cool, because I can't. I mean, I'll, I'll do it in the rollerblades, but I definitely can't do it on the skateboard. Yeah, power to you, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm right? gonna stay over here on this little whoopsie. Right, right. I'll stay. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay here with the other kids that are like five years old trying to learn. Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, so that that was a fun time in I don't, you know prior life. Yeah, I don't remember. I think my first board was like a Zorlock. It wasn't like a super. It was def- It was definitely a uh, like a like not a Kmart, 
but something like it we it like was like one of the lower end ones at us yeah because yeah. then once you knew like you were into it then we went to you know media to like one of the skateboard spot and then you were able to get your yeah. custom board board trucks wheels and the, customized everything the media shop was where i went for my next two yeah um i'm trying to remember and it was easily like a like a hundred two hundred dollar board every time because you well, customize the, everything the board itself was close to 100 and then like trucks and wheels were another 40 and 30 dollars uh -huh. set so you were paying close to 200 for like easily a set um i think i think my last board is um the alien workshop i think, sounds familiar i think that's it mm -hmm. um and it was like i think it had an orange owl on it it looked really cool the one before that i had Oh, gee. maybe a zero i think i had a zero as well yeah 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 so um i i was trying to, trying to board slide on that one for like three years so like it got really dinged up and mm -hmm. i was like i think i'm ready for a new one yeah yeah i think i think at least every year and a half two years i think i switched up because yeah. we, we I mean we were skateboarding almost every day mm -hmm. but it not like we were doing anything crazy where it was just wearing down our boards all the like well, the, all the, the time the bearings with the wheels and and the yeah. trucks like hanging on to the boards like they yeah got, you, they got you would have to do the trucks and the wheels a little bit but the board would probably save you maybe about two years yeah 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 you you could get your trucks or your wheels replaced for like 75 bucks if like your board was still in pretty good shape. and then grip tape on top of the board that the grip tape on the on the board was more wearing off you had to get that maybe every couple of months depending on how much you skated but yeah. yeah yeah i think my first board it was like oh yeah just take a piece of duct tape on the back to know like which is the back and which is the front yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Did, did you did you ride goofy foot or did you ride regular goofy i was goofy foot too yeah and it's weird because like and I, my brother was regular so it was I, like i because there are things in dance like my left cartwheels are stronger mm -hmm. my left splits are stronger than my right but like my i turn to the like I, I turn clockwise so like to the right and like all of my jumps lead with my right but then i'd, I'd skateboard and I, I think it was just and maybe it was doing like the like the cartwheels beforehand where like i i would plant on my left foot but i i I'd rely on my right like to do the kicking into the yeah cartwheel. so i was like all right i'd rather position my left leg on the board and push off the right mm -hmm. and then anything that i had to do to direct the board like i had my my strong leg in the front mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah 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 it's so crazy to think because like even uh doing turns and dancing like my left leg got stronger mm -hmm. so I, I think between skating and like like after you're pushing off on the right mm -hmm. and you're stepping up you like you your left leg had to be in control if you're right exactly so yeah it's it's i i never really thought about that until like literally right now like and how that makes sense like for my like my mechanics uh, and stuff so yeah I, I i think i was primarily goofy foot but being that i was kind of somewhat ambidextrous i could do a little bit of regular foot and goofy foot but i always was you know going back to just being goofy foot most of the time but do you still write left-handed more so than your right hand or i write more on my right but i can like if i'm putting like for cards for like little ant now i'll do it on my left because that's more like chicken chicken scratch sure yeah sure. so then uh then i'll use my right to actually write but if i'm doing like something like a kid handwriting i'll do it with my left and i and even then because you get like, your practice in get on that practice hand. Hand. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <So> like, <laughs> but even then like doing like child handwriting with this it's still like i could still if i really practice more i could probably do some pretty good mm -hmm. writing with it but if i'm just being very sloppy with it yeah it's like kid writing and just chicken scratch all over i had um my finger broken in like a uh, freshman year mm -hmm. i was practicing dance and someone we were rolling on the floor and someone kicked me right here and broke my finger awesome um so, yeah it was awesome uh, <laughs> so they cast around my wrist and all the way up i don't remember if we talked about this on here but they cast it all the way around these two so mm -hmm. um yeah no this is my left hand it was on my right hand. Did it fully heal? To, I mean, yeah, it's it it's like totally fine. Never gives me any problems now. But um, I was trying to write with my left hand in school. Like once I went back in, and it was atrocious. Mm. Like it was so hard. Right. So I learned how to hold the pencil. Or let's be serious. I was not using pencils by the time I got to high school. You, Just you were always for, a pen person. Oh, pens for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I learned to hold like with the cast. I learned how to like slide the pen 
right between my front two fingers and then hold the other side of it. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, this is writing better than trying to write normal on the left. Yeah. Um, it was still not great. It got better along the way. And by the time I got good with it, the cast came off. Right. Like there were times after that, I was like, I want to see if I can still write like this. And that lasted for maybe six months or a year. And then I was just, I never went back to it again. Mm -hmm. I, I just laughed at how I figured out how to hold it like super awkward with my strong hand. Right. <laughs> strong hand. Strong child. hand. <laughs> my strong hand. <laughs> Shoot. Um, holiday music. Let's get back. To I was that just going to say, let's uh, do some holiday music. Let's uh, talk holiday um, things since we just went on a tangent about like, Middle and high school things. Right. Dude, never. Okay. Last thing. Then we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. The detention thing. Yeah. You got yeah. you to say that. that got to talk about that. So we were going to Spanish class after lunch. And it was me and, and um, my one friend. Um, and he and I skated together. And then we like would skate with the other guy and their friends that you yeah. mentioned. Um. And we all had Spanish class together after lunch. So they were like, let's just roll into Spanish late and act like it's nothing. And I was like, yeah, great idea. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. you know, 14 and 15 year old high school. Right. Like, like yeah, guys yeah. just trying to mess with the teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> bell rings. Nothing could happen. Bell rings. <laughs> we're, you know, at one of their lockers and then we're trolling down the hall, like acting like it wasn't going to be anything. And then we walked in the room and there was a substitute teacher. <laughs> it was like the French teacher just covering for her. Cause she was out and yeah, she was like, uh, gentlemen got, uh, got your hall passes. Like your like reason why we weren't mm -hmm. coming in late and nobody said anything. She's like, all right, I'll see you after school for detention. And I was the only one that went. <laughs> yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was actually all right because like i as soon as my last class was over i just went to the class and she was like okay front and back side of the page just right i will not be to late the class again and once i finished writing it out and i turned it in she's like okay you can go i wonder how the tension is for this generation like be like yeah how are you going to get a kid this day don't do that again and or uh like having them write out those things like i ain't writing out that whoopsie shit. yeah seriously I, i'd i'd have to ask someone uh like, like I, I can only imagine what saying like oh you're like gonna go trying to, to discipline a kid and say, right this you're, like, you're i'm in you're <laughs> you're taking away my right to feel the way i want to feel like all right well say that again <laughs> in detention and like, <laughs> yeah. write that out a hundred times in detention and yeah. tell me how much you feel that way yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I actually don't know what happened to the others after that. Like, I I think if you skip like a general after school detention, and you got like a Saturday morning uh -huh. detention. And I was like, and I if you skip Saturday morning, then you were deep. Then you were deep, deep. Yeah, deep, deep, do, do, deep, deep, do, do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I am not doing Saturday detention. Mostly I only got like one detention. I think it. Was, I forget what it was for. It was a very small, minor thing, but it was like we got to give you a detention for it, and it was like at, it was an after school thing. I I. I I don't even remember, but I did get detention for something. You're not a total prude. I'm not a total prude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh well, I mean, okay. So it wasn't too too like thing. Oh, like I, I, it wasn't. I totally forget what it was. It was something very minor. Like either I, I skipped something or I didn't hand something in the right way, or it was something very minor. They're like, all right, just get a detention for it and call it a day, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I stayed after for, like, I think it was maybe like a 30, 45 minutes. Like, all right, you can go. Whatever. Yeah, it, I wasn't there like a ha more than a half hour. And yeah. I, was, I mean, I, at that point, and this was freshman year in high school, and I had walked to and from middle school. Mm -hmm. And when I say walk to middle school, I mean ran when I missed the bus. Yeah. Because my other detentions were in middle school and it was because I was late to school because I missed the bus. And by the time at least you didn't have to go there. to your parents and like because I've done that a, like, a couple times where I'm like, I would get to the bus like a minute later, like, oh, they're pulling off. And I'd have to take that long walk back to my parents like I missed the bus. <laughs> like, get in the car. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Literally. At least you didn't have to live that lifestyle because <laughs> my mom would be, you know, getting ready to go uh, to Coburn and do her work. Yeah. So she was already up. My dad's already out, so he wouldn't even know. 
So uh, you know, then she'd have to, all right, well, I got to waste my time to take you to school, and then I'm going to be late to work, so thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. Aunt. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, fortunately, like, my, mo- my mom was working at home, so she would just be like, all right, let me get my coffee. <laughs> so then I'd be late, and then they give me detention, which in turn, I'd have to get there. 30 minutes before school started mm-hmm. and i think that that was like their I, maybe their model for that was like let the parent be irritated that they have to bring the kid in earlier mm-hmm. because they were late yeah um and then it makes the parent freak out on the kid so that the kid isn't late anymore like i think that that was like the psychology probably behind it. probably and I, I, I don't know how kids like are disciplined these days because kids are Whoopsie. nuts these days yeah. <laughs> they, they don't have any type of you know sense of like oh we shouldn't do this because we're probably going to get in trouble well, learning consequences yeah yeah it's it's all about like well we should be able to do this we have the right to do it. like well you do but you don't but do what you want <laughs> you have like humanitarian rights like to make sure that you aren't abused by your parents other than that Know your role and shut your whoopsie. mouth. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, whoopsie. We're gonna find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I never got in trouble for anything like super serious. At least, like, no, no, no school fights. I think someone was <laughs> someone was like wrestling me, like just not like wrestling me on the ground, but like on the playground in elementary school, and I they were on my back, and I took them over my shoulder, and when they landed on the ground, their glasses. Were, were, were like sliding off as they went over my shoulder and then when they landed the glasses poked them in the eye and then they just laid there on the ground and the like i guess one of the girls that was good friends with the kid was like checking up on him and everyone and the, like the, you okay like <laughs> you all right and he's just laying in like oh my eye and the aides were like all right everyone line up and i was like i'm lining up i'm like i'm gonna go line up like, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not gonna get yeah, suspended I, I got in fourth a, grade i got like a very small fight uh in elementary school i was picking up for my friend because he just got bullied and i like pushed the bully back and then he pushed me a lot harder and i'm like all right i'm done like (laughs) but then the fact that i initiated starting it me and him got in and we were put into the office we lost recess for one or like for a week or something okay my and uh, my mom tried to negotiate with the principal saying like he was just doing it in self-defense, but she couldn't get out of it. She's like, but like, yeah, I mean, you he was involved. doing it in self-defense. You but were involved kind of thing. So you got to kind of eat the punishment. Kind she's of like, she, and I think because she wasn't she was a teacher's aide first before mm-hmm. getting into the actual office uh, and being in, in the a, um, actual uh, classroom as a teacher's aide. But so she wasn't. I don't think she was there on the uh, field at that time, but I guess somebody obviously probably told her about the incident. So she was there and she was saying like, yeah, I mean, he was just doing his self-defense, but the principal was like, he did like kind of initiate it though, even though he didn't really embark on a lot of things. So we're going to give him at least a week out out of reset. So we're like, all right, whatever. I'll, just do whatever yeah and but, your mom probably wasn't there long enough at the time to have like any pull yeah like, exactly yeah yeah sure. so it, it was a harmless thing but it, it was definitely like my only time like i can really say like i got into a fight but it, when i got like when i when i pushed the guy and the guy pushed me way hard i'm like all right i'm done You're like, like <laughs> sold sold yeah. you win yeah. <laughs> i forfeit yeah. oh god i forfeit <laughs> Like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> you win. You win, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Christmas music. Yeah, I was going to say, let's get into this Christmas music here, here before we, we get out of here. Uh, but uh, so one Christmas song that I enjoy every year is uh, Last Christmas by uh, Wham. So something about that. And I didn't know it was by Wham at first, but every year I would hear that. And I'm like, this this song's like, at least for a Christmas song, I'm like, all right, this song sounds good, blah, 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 lyrics, everything. But then it maybe a year or two later, once I started hearing it, I'm like, all right, who sings this song? And then, you know, think, remember saying that it was Wham, George Michaels and everything. I'm like, all right, I mean, okay. And then I just started incorporating out and I'll play it every once in a while during Christmas. 
very rarely because the last time I played Christmas music, I was told to get off the stage. So I'm like, I got you. <laughs> I forfeit. I forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um. So I mean, o- other than the generic, you know, Christmas music, but if, like you're talking about like actual like bands or like singers that have sung them, mm-hmm. I would say you know my go to one is usually Last Christmas. So that's usually a good one that that I can, you know, kind of go to and be like, all right, cool. This like if I'm in the spirit, which I was in it for a little while until this thing happened. Right. And then I had to crawl myself out of that like Hole. ditch. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, I'm a little bit back into it now. Yeah. So <laughs> Well, and I think once you get to um obviously this is coming out on Friday, that'll be the twenty second. Mm-hmm. Um a week we're pretty much at this point yeah we're uh, other than when it this comes out but we're doing we're this obviously today we're a week out from christmas yeah and it'll be three days before i think by the time you get to like friday evening and you get through the weekend it'll all probably just come rushing in at you like all at yeah once, right mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah so funny you mentioned that song because i have um these two students down in wilmington that they have this ongoing like bet every year where it's they try to avoid the song mm. <clears throat> like that specific song or yeah, yeah. it's hard yeah <laughs> like they just told me about that last week and um i was like oh man don't make me play it and they're like it doesn't count if mm-hmm. we both hear it at the same time hmm. and if someone is deliberately playing it so still don't do it right? yeah <laughs> and i was like honestly, interesting honestly that song like i'd have to be in the right mood for it I actually um, doing backup with Jade. She covered it the one year uh, Jeff and I had a show Mm -hmm. um, up in New York and she, it was like in December. So she was covering it, which is one of the only times that we did catch me and fallen like as like, that's her like number one hit. Mm -hmm. Um, So she did that as the closer, but then went into last Christmas, like her, like her own cover of it. So we had like choreographed, like, uh, some dancing to it like the day before Mm -hmm. we're like all right like it's the end of the set like we don't have to nail this because we're gonna do this once and then probably never do it again Mm -hmm. kind of thing so as long as you have something instead of just standing there in the background instead of (laughs) freestyling for three and a half minutes yeah just kind of doing the two step for like five minutes but yeah we have nothing there we (laughs) we had certain sections that we blocked off as like priority that we're like all right let's do like legitimate stuff here that is substance yeah um and it was it was fun because like we didn't like beat ourselves up because it was the end of it was like a 15 minute set. So we mm-hmm. were, by that point, we were already dancing 12 minutes. And, right. Um, but it, it was pretty cool because the way that that um, casino was set up up there, I forget what it's called. It's like. Uh, I, I don't remember. It was I want to say that was it was eight years ago now. Um, and it would have probably been eight, eight years ago this past weekend. Um, but the casino we were in, like there was like the regular casino floor and then you had to walk up into this like, um, bar area, but they had, the bar was like pretty big around and then they had an upper level Mm -hmm. that like, um, the stage was actually set in the, like, like the bar was here, but the stage was high rise like Mm. lifted so we were performing for like the people down on the first floor but there were people lined up up on the second it was almost like performing at a mall right on a stage yeah it was pretty cool like i think that was the only time i did that one um but yeah that other than that song uh for me i mean uh mr grinch anytime i hear that one on the radio i'm like yep i'm 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 catching that one Mm -hmm. Uh, just a fun tune and um i mean my my kids have been asking and when i say my kids i mean my students have been asking me to play christmas music since before thanksgiving and i was like absolutely not so last week i went in and started playing it and a couple of like the teenagers from like my third class Mm -hmm. they thought that like i had that i wasn't in and i had a sub and they're like oh my god you're here and i was like yeah Mm -hmm. and they're like we heard christmas music being played and we thought that you weren't here because you've been refusing to play it (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> like, nah, we're we're good now. <laughs> no, someone like my my students in my first class that are younger were like requesting certain songs, and I was like, as long as it's not that one Mariah Carey song. I yeah like, i was like i'm not doing it that's what i try to avoid yeah. but i i finally got into because they played at the gig that i had this past yeah. friday and it was right after i played and then it just gets into the uh i'm like ah, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so actually um there are a couple other songs on that mariah carey album that i did play that i was like yeah okay i, I could be good with this one mm-hmm. um Michael Bublé's Christmas album is my favorite, though. Like, I can listen to that one top. He's bottom. got some good stuff, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, his his rendition of All I Want for Christmas is You is, like, one of the first things that I'll play every year, like, to, like, get me into the season because it's not, like, your traditional, like, holly jolly, mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's, like, a nice, like, classy, easy way to transition into tolerating the Christmas music. Yeah. Like, I'd say a guilty pleasure for me is that one Ariana Grande song that comes on the Santa baby. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I'll just be like slow nine and like, closing it's the one you sit in the car and you're just like, <laughs> and you hope no one sees you or hears it playing. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> I shouldn't have it playing that loud. Yeah, like turn it down a little bit, and then you're like, when they walk away, turn it back up. Like, <laughs> and you're like, everyone can. Whoopsie! Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Wham. <laughs> Hashtag wham. wham. There it is. Yeah. Wham. <laughs> Dude. Oh man. Uh. Yeah, definitely gonna be a different vibe. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, away a few days before leading into christmas so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually coming home to do christmas with my fam um like in the afternoon so i'll miss christmas morning which like my younger sister has always said like it's always been kind of like an understood like okay if if you get married and you get your own place or if you have kids like you're doing your own thing yeah um which i you know, had been moved out a couple of times, mm-hmm. but I was living close enough to home that I would come home. Like there were plenty of years where I would like stay out like Christmas yeah. Eve, but just come home Christmas morning, like yeah, 8, 30, 9, 10 a.m. so that I could do like the traditional Christmas mm-hmm. morning with mm-hmm. like, my mm-hmm. parents and my younger sister. Um, My younger sister's boyfriend now like kind of like is living with us. So I'm like, okay, well, She's not going to be left alone with my parents. Like the, the four of them will have it together. Yeah. And um, Cheyenne last year, like, cause she had the back surgeries and then we moved in. Yeah. Um, I asked her before Thanksgiving, I was like, can we like set up Christmas up at the cabin and then go up there? Cause be- with Christmas landing on a Monday, we'll work Friday, leave Friday. And then we'll, we'll spend um, Christmas Eve, Eve and mm-hmm. Christmas Eve. And Christmas morning there. Yeah. And then come home um, and do Christmas with my family for like the second half of the day. Yeah, that's good. Thing. That's good. Yeah, it'll, it'll and be And it shouldn't good. be too bad of a ride coming back because, I mean, everybody should already be settled in and shouldn't be a lot of tra- held up. Shouldn't be a lot of traveling. And coming home from there, there's not a lot of traffic until we get back closer to Lancaster anyway. Yeah, so, once you get closer down the 476, then you hit a little bit of traffic coming into the, yeah. the you know, off of the blue like when you get into the blue area you have a little bit yeah fortunately we we don't have to we don't actually take the blue route coming back we like um because we'll take um we'll take like 202 to 30 out through lancaster and then we just uh, go, okay and then we just go west right that way so we actually miss the blue route and we miss 80 okay so like when you're thinking mountains you're thinking poconos which you go up yeah, the, yeah you okay. go up the northeast extension yeah you mm-hmm. go oh, hi hey. <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> clip it clip it 100 percent uh dude too good that was good um yeah we we head out towards Penn state like passing lancaster passing harrisburg like that way so gotcha. um yeah once we're like once you pass lancaster you don't hit much traffic we we probably will friday today once this comes out mm-hmm. um when we leave but that that that'll be okay um and i was talking on the last episode about um 
how fun Christmas gatherings were after Christmas happens because everyone mm-hmm. everyone has the deadline leading up to December 25th. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so cool because if you have something like the weekend after, like before New Year's, you can deal with that like the week leading into that weekend yeah, and, and say, okay, you're not priority. And you just deal with like all of the the priority stuff, which is getting the shopping done for the 25th kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, do you have anything going on like after Christmas per se, or uh, you we... basically get your Whoopsie. knocked out like on Christmas Day between like yeah, I mean like I said the the usual we used to you know before we you know we're living together and everything we did the whole two family thing and everything and now I uh, will do Christmas at my uh, my parents' house. I uh, we used to do we used to do Christmas Eve with Jen's family, Parents. but since we had kind of stopped that a little bit with everybody having their a lot of different things going on, mm-hmm. uh, so we'll probably just have Christmas Eve here, do a little small thing here, then we'll do Christmas at my parents. We'll do Christmas morning here, and uh, her mom will stay over, and my parents will probably come over in the morning just to see him and blah blah blah. So, what time do you think that you're? gonna be doing christmas morning like what time do you think that early 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 (laughs) so at least like will you have like some downtime to chill out like midday yeah i mean we'll have a little bit to kind of you know because we'll have to change up and be ready for do you do like a christmas breakfast or like brunch kind of thing or like is it kind of just like a normal maybe a breakfast okay we'll do a little bit of this little bit of that and then uh we'll wait to have like a big dinner with yeah. everybody sure and then the day after christmas we the last couple of years we've been at least meeting with uh jen's their family like everybody will do a uh like a late breakfast early lunch nice. type of thing at, at one of the diners in jersey so we'll meet up with them and do a little something and then it's pretty much you know uh that whole re- in between the christmas new year's is just kind of like having a vacation some downtime sometimes i mean if her brother was coming up then it would be hanging out with him or something uh but the last couple years we hadn't had that um so especially this year it might be a little more quieter because you know after christmas this is going to go down decorations will be down and we're just going to be you know thinking okay prepping after after christmas because that christmas weekend uh will be 36 weeks Mm -hmm. so i probably won't be talking to you that weekend because the last time yeah (laughs) you you were already at the hospital yeah so Um, yeah i uh (laughs) i'm kidding i probably will talk to you (laughs) (laughs) i just probably won't see you see you you're not going to hear from me. You're going to hear from me. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be over. I'll be over. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, but after Christmas is pretty much just like uh, any week is going to be the week at that point. She's not do- She's not due until the end of next month, but she's but been saying, she's like, you're, this you're, kid's coming early. You're, you're being prepared. It's good. She's cause... like, do you know when you get that gut feeling? She's like, this kid's coming early again. Well, and when you had little tone a few weeks early you didn't have another kid like to navigate exactly and that's been the hardest thing with just not necessarily hard but it's been more of the challenge because last year or last time she was able to kind of just sit down whenever she wanted to and you know now you're dealing with a kid and he's been over the weekend this past week and just been like i'm hungry i want this i want that blah 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 and then like you know so it's like okay you can't get into a rhythm of being productive because he's yeah being you a little bit right so <laughs> we had to just be like all right go watch tv and like we put on like a two-hour show of something it was like all right just sit here and watch this we feel bad we're not hanging out with them but we got to get stuff done so stuff to do, yeah. we did like laundry we did the uh new guys laundry uh i over the week last week uh you know got the crib up with my dad mm-hmm. got that going little guy uh his toddler bed was moved across the room so and he's been doing pretty well with the the new you know location he he when there's like oh i love it i'm like oh thank god like (laughs) oh because his bed got shifted around shifted so i was thinking i hope he doesn't have like a bad night or two but he he's been doing good good he he didn't really react too bad to it so he actually did he didn't mind it so that's the one thing at least with me you know not working at least if he had a bad night or two at least i would be able to kind of just kick it up at night and be like all right here 
go back to sleep, go back to sleep, like gen sleep. So, uh, but no, uh, it's been good because I've just been able to like, outside of getting our financial things in order, now it's like, now it's to the point where, you know, during the day it's like, okay, if I don't have any phone calls, if I don't have like something to do, what am I doing? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to keep myself productive and trying to keep things going. So I'm not just, cause I, even though I don't mind just being at home, I'm just not trying to sit at home and act like I'm just being a lazy. Whoopsie. Yeah. You, you know, just, cause I, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be productive in a way, but just having at least trying to spill out some time for, you know, a little bit of me time, but not having a full day of just sitting on a couch and just watching movies. And, and then her coming home, like, what did you do? Like nothing. Yeah, nothing. And like, yeah. why? why? Like, yeah. Then I got to hear that. So, <laughs> yeah. And it, it also, and I can speak from like the working second shift and weekend vibe. Like mm -hmm. if you get up and say, Oh, I'm just going to chill through the morning. Like it, it's better to get up and move and do some things and then say, all right, I like, I got some things done. Yeah. It and, helps that, you know, I'm taking them and getting them off to work and school in the morning. So mm -hmm. I'm already up. So the, it's not like they're just leaving and you're just in bed and you're like, yeah. I'm just going to stay here for hours. So it yeah. helps <laughs> that I'm already up. Cause the part of me is saying like, Oh, go back to sleep. And I'm like, I'm already up. So what's the point? Cause if I do go to sleep, I'm not waking up till 12. Yeah. So then that's sure. going to ruin the rest of the day if I have stuff to do. And then there's been times where I'm like, all right, well, I got to make a phone call. So I just mentally just say, all right, just do the phone call, get all that stuff done. Once you're done all your priorities for the day, then, then you, you can just do it out, a little. chill out and yeah. do what, do what sure. you want. Well, that was like, you know, even today, like I um, had a meeting at 1130 with my uh, one job that has like the weekly meetings, mm -hmm. um, which actually wound up getting canceled. But I was like, OK, I got to like do some ordering online, do some shopping. Uh, and again, this is Monday. So like there are things I have coming in like in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So um, got that kind of lined up because um, uh, tomorrow being Tuesday hits and I'm both jobs, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, first job Friday, and then I'm, I'm gone. So, like, I literally have, like, today. Yeah. I do have time on Thursday. Um, and really, Tuesday, I could cut out of the first job a little early if I wanted to to say, okay, I have that block of time for four to six hours in between if I got to tie up loose ends, and that's mm -hmm. it. Friday, I go into work, and I'm coming home and basically, like, packing the car and getting on yeah. the road kind of thing. So, um yeah, I mean, Anth, I will say, um, still fishing, right? You've still been fishing. fishing. Um, I might try to get back out this week, but knowing that uh, we had some warm, warmer weather this past weekend, but it was raining, and I was looking at the weather this coming week, and I'm like, oh, it's going to drop back down to the 40s. So I'm like, great because my my license expired the fishing license expires at the end of the month so i'm like if i can try to get one more day out it'd be great so let's see i don't got to do so <laughs> now nah, you'd be fishing for them jobs bro. i'm fishing and, for jobs yeah, yeah. man and uh, it's all good yeah that... there's always there's always a light at the end of the tunnel i'm pretty positive that things even if i uh, you know because it's not that I, i'm not fully you know out of the situation our company is still there uh we're just having a you know, a, uh, a little fumble. To... We're having a fumble at this point to keep it modern. Yeah, yeah. And so we might be able to get back soon. We might have to wait until next year. Uh, but there might be other opportunities for me as well. So I'm just kind of taking it day by day. And I'm just, uh, you know, keep my options open at this point. So to next year, you know, man, 2024 yep, till next year. Yeah. And uh, so, 2024 is a great year for you. I mean, you're going to be navigating the, Got a lot of things coming next year. And so. uh, yeah, you got a lot going on. So uh, thank you. Cheers to that. Cheers yeah. to that. And ha thank you for having me over for uh, our second annual. Absolutely. Holiday episode. And we definitely got off track with like talking about not holiday stuff, but that that's all right. Um, it's all good. Definitely uh, feeling the cheer. I mean, the platform looks great. Uh, the tree looks awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Merry Christmas to you, man. Merry Christmas to you, buddy. Uh, thank you. Uh, clankity clank clank. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yep. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone here. Merry Christmas to you uh, guys. For those that celebrate, if you celebrate otherwise, yeah, uh, whatever you celebrate, if so, if not Christmas, happy holidays for yes. sure. Uh, 
and the next time that you'll see us like actually on an episode um will be the next year so happy new year to you as mm-hmm. well um anthony anything else before we sign off obviously if you're watching us on youtube or if you're listening to us on your preferred uh podcast uh platform, platform. uh thank you don't forget to like and share us um we appreciate all of you uh that are tuning in either now or after the fact um on to the next i mean we got season three coming up season three it's wild the trips about. trips <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy yeah. and we'll, we'll get into that maybe on that first episode of the third season so yeah. we can definitely take this as the conclusion of season two of one set so thank you guys this has been another great year and you know i i feel this year was you know even bigger than last year and we're hoping for next season more things come you know we started having you know some you know ad affiliations coming into the uh to the pod so we thank you to all our affiliates we've been working with and uh it's just been a a long year of improvements and thank you all for being here for all the ups and downs with us and uh here's to another year of the one sub podcast and like jim said if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe below on youtube or any where you see or listen to your uh podcast just click one set podcast and if you find us hit that follow button share with a friend and you know join the one set fam That's it, man. Uh, My kiss. That's the one.